Today on this old house, see this board? Yep. That's actually destroyed from termites. Uh, we're gonna try to find some plants that'll do really well at Judas House. And this is the only college in America dedicated to the building arts, and we are gonna take a tour. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. This one right here is right on. Ooh, and the smell just changed. That's bad guano. Oh, lovely. You know, I would imagine that this is in a historical district. The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Charleston, South Carolina. This city is filled with architectural gems like this one right here. The house that you see back there, that is called Swordgate House, originally built in the late 1700s and it got its name from this gate right here. You see the swords that have been built into this wrought iron masterpiece? There are a lot of beautiful houses in the city. Hey, good morning, Tommy. Hey, Kevin, how are you? All right. What you find out there? Oh, I found this little guy back here. It's just a little bit nicer than the ones we're working on. Yeah, well, we are doing two projects down here, and the first one we're gonna look at today is in pretty rough shape. All right, let's go. The house is in Charleston's Elliott Borough neighborhood, and the homeowner is actually the third generation in the house. Unfortunately, the building was abandoned for more than a decade, so the contractor who the homeowner hired he feels that he has to do an extensive demolition before he can come up with a good plan for reconstruction. Well, I mean, it makes sense. He has to open it up so we can see what the problems are, so we can price it. He's actually going to be on site when we get there. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Good to hey see guys. you. guys. How are y'all? Right. All right. Pleasure. Good so, to see uh, you. Welcome aboard. Yeah, thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience down here. What kind of work are you doing in Charleston? So we work on uh, a number of different types of projects, but, but this, this type of project in particular is something that we do a fair amount of. Mm. And the challenges of working in the city? The challenges associated with working in the city of the Charleston, uh, on the front end, the regulatory perspective, uh, you have to go through the, the BAR, the Board of Architectural Review, which is a public board that uh, is required for approval prior to permitting for all exterior architectural details and so that's a fairly stringent process. Yeah, we deal with that up north where we have historical districts, historical societies, and they are really interested in the exterior of the building. That's exactly right. Yeah, so they don't care about the inside, so that's a good thing. So when you say strict, I mean, that means you cannot tear this down under any circumstances. Under no circumstances can you, can you tear it down. And so in some cases you get to the point of an owner not having the capacity to actually restore their structure. And so the house ends up ultimately sitting and the city refers to that as demol demolition by neglect. Now up north we deal with snow and ice and insulation and window di difference of sure. because of the cold. Sure, we've got heat, humidity, water. So <laughs> I know you what comes humidity. along with that is, 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 is termite infestation uh, and then a lot of expansion and contractions, especially in, in these old wood structures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is not your first time seeing a building like this, right? You do these types of houses all the time? Yes, for better or worse, we've carved out a, a niche for ourselves in taking these types of structures and, and re re rehabilitating them. How bad is it? It's, it's not that bad. We, oh. we have done worse. An optimist. Um, the, the house structurally, whether it looks like it or not, is, is in fairly decent shape. And uh, it, we, we don't really know uh, the, the condition until, until we get into the guts of it. You've got to see the bones by removing all the skin. That's yeah. exactly right. The rear portion of the house was an addition that was done in the 1960s or 70s. The, typically, the material and the quality of that work is, is far inferior than what was built with the original structure. And so they've allowed for a wholesale removal of this particular piece. Just as well, it's all rotted. You can see the water's been getting in there for a long time. It is. And so how long do you think all the demo's gonna take? So roughly two to three week process to get all the demolition done. Big job. It is a big job. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. 
Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. This is our second project here in Charleston. It's what they call a single house. It was built in the 1840s. Our homeowners just bought it and they have got plans for a full-blown renovation. Behind the main house is the kitchen house. This is a separate building and it was used for cooking and that protected the main house from fire. And this is where demo begins. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Mark. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. So uh, how is our cook house here? What are you finding? Finding a lot. <laughs> Something that's new to me. Oh, what's that? I was fully expecting to find this to be originally on grade. Just, just built right down on the dirt floor. Put the joist right on the dirt and go from there. Okay. We've discovered something that indicates the original floor height. Yeah, you can see right here, Kevin, these are old timbers right here, and it's a mortise and tendon joint with a peg that holds them tightly together. Now, obviously, this pressure-treated wood right here is not original. Mm -hmm. And that's because this floor has probably rotted, and they repaired it and replaced it. No surprise. Built in 1840s, All right? right? But not only from water and moisture coming out of the soil, but if you look right here, see this board? Yep. It's all destroyed, and that's actually destroyed from termites. Uh. So we have a termite problem. Termites love to travel horizontally because they're lazy. They don't like to climb. When they run out of the meat that they want to eat, they actually build a mud tunnel. And they stay inside that mud tunnel because they don't like to get exposed to air and light. They'll die. And once they get up there, they will stay horizontal as long as they can. OK. I hate lazy termites. Yeah, me too. So that's a bad thing. But the fact that this floor was built up off the ground is a good thing. Are we going back with a wood frame floor? No, we're not. No. Moisture and termites are something we just can't have. So we want to go back with a concrete slab. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, we've got to remove all the framing. Okay. From there, we'll poison the soil for the termites Tom was speaking about. Then we'll go back with gravel, and then we'll do a moisture barrier to prevent all that moisture from coming up through nice. the floor. Right. Some sand, pour a new slab, and then the homeowner can decide what their finished floor wants to be. Put anything they want on a slab. Wood, masonry, Beautiful. whatever they want. So for today, all of this comes out. Right. Let's do it. One of the things affecting projects here in Charleston, as well as all across the country, is a lack of skilled craftsmen. It's something that we've been dealing with with our Generation Next project, and it is something that this community is doing something about. They have actually banded together to create a college for the building arts. In fact, it's the only school in the country that gives a bachelor's degree in building arts. And we have been lucky enough to convince them to work with us on our project. We provide a really unique education here at the American College in that our students are still required to have a liberal arts core, mm -hmm. but it's also combined with professional crafts training. So no other school in America offers that kind of education. Love that. So how about a tour? I'd love to give you a tour. This is our material science classroom, and the students here are studying about materials that will be durable, lightweight, whether you're talking historically or in modern times, those mm -hmm. are important qualities. You know, how do materials corrode? Um, how do they stand up to mm -hmm. weather and other things? And so they've got access to all of the traditional academic resources, like any college. They do. The school is um, very wired in technology. We've got all the modern teaching equipment. And they also spend a lot of time in the shop. They spend at least half their time, especially in their junior and senior year, they're working primarily in the shops. This is our wood workshop. What a space you have here. And here's an example of some joinery. Oh, yeah. So some in progress. I think that's a scarf joint, if I've got that correct. And it's set up to receive a, a little key right here. Indeed. And so what are the students working on? Are these well, just projects, or are they actually building something? Right now, they're actually working on putting together the principal members for a new mezzanine that's going to go in this area of the building. Oh, that's great. So you got the students improving their own space. Expand their workspace. How many colleges can say that? Looks like the layout for one of those keys to connect these two beams right here. 
here. Exactly. So they learn a lot of timber framing. Um, they come out of here with that specialty? Uh, they do. Um, and actually, a lot of our students may work a few years for a general contractor, mm -hmm. but uh, a great number of them go on to become entrepreneurs, and that way they can pass their skills on down to the next generation. So we're not just educating for today, but for the future as well. That's terrific. So, Kevin, this is our traditional masonry program. Of course, Charleston homes, many of them build a brick, an important building material here in Charleston. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that program, we have stone carving and plaster work. Here's an example in stone carving. Uh, this student is working on a cornice that will go up on this wall to add decorative elements to this room. What's that material? That's um, uh, Indiana limestone. Wow, so something like that gets hand carved. This is sort of the interim step, and exactly. then this smooth finish right here is the final? Exactly, <laughs> that exactly. That is remarkable. Okay, and the layout that's going on here, what's this? These students are working on doing the layout for one of the Queen Eleanor crosses that you see in England. That's going to be replicated? It is. Um, wow. There were 12, now there are only three left, and these guys are working to recreate them. So sort of a full-scale layout from a model of It there. is. Amazing. And then obviously they work on plaster too, right? Indeed. This is actually a smaller scale reproduction of the ceiling at Drayton Hall Plantation outside of Charleston. That's one of your most prominent plantations. It is, and indeed it's probably one of the most significant examples of Georgian Palladian architecture in America. So the students did all of that? They did, and it's still a work in progress as you can see. They're continuing to complete it. That is amazing. It really is. This is our iron workshop, one of the most interesting parts of the building, I believe. And one of the noisiest, too. It is one of the noisiest. Remember earlier when we were talking about the American College being founded in the aftermath of Hurricane Hugo? There was one significant artisan left in town practicing then, and that was Philip Simmons. Mm -hmm. He was a blacksmith, was responsible for about 500 pieces wow. of the ironwork in our beautiful town. I mean, what a critical trade down here with all of your beautiful ironwork on the fences and the gates for all those beautiful gardens. It is, indeed, and he wanted to make sure that his legacy, his expertise, would be passed down to future generations, and mm -hmm. there was no one there, and so he was instrumental in the founding of the American College of the Building Arts because he wanted to ensure that this level of craftsmanship would continue into the future. And here it is, right? Continuing to this day. Right here. I'd love to show you the library. Sure. Okay. So this is another of my favorite places here at the American College of the Building Arts, and that's our library. We have more than 8,500 volumes on the building arts. It's a unique space. Sure, now we're back on a college campus. We are. We're back into right. the academic side. And speaking of which, I'd like you to meet our president, General Colby Broadwater. General, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, Kevin. You have a terrific facility here. This place is awesome. Thank you. We're really proud of it. We, uh, we moved in this time last year. Great. Well, we're hoping that maybe you guys can actually help us out. Um, you, as you know, we've got a project here in town, and we've got a couple of things that could really use your guys' expertise if you're willing to throw in with us. We would really love to see if we can assist you in any way that, that could to get this house restored. I love it. A perfect match. All right, Lee, thank you so much for the tour. Thank you. It's good spot. to be with you. Same. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Just a few blocks across town from our other project, demo is continuing in the backyard. Morning, Judith. Good morning. How Welcome. do you like your backyard? Take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. We've got to fill it with some nice plants. We do, we do. And we've got a good plan to start with, which is important. Yeah, well, I think the goal is to have this house really be vibrant with flowers and plants. And um, we can get some fruit trees in. That's the first piece. And the second piece is that there are all these houses that are coming up back here. So we want to have as much screening as we can. It's basically a green wall. A green wall. So wall anything that's really up, yeah. to build up on this side that's really you know, lush and dense and lovely. And one of the uh, trees we're thinking about are loquat trees because uh, we find them in Bermuda.
Bermuda and I spend a lot of time there with Julia. And we just walk around and we eat loquat fruit and it's lovely, it's sweet and tart and maybe some banana trees. That'd be great. Now I'm an expert on plants in the Northeast. Down here, not so much. Okay. But I do know a nursery down here with an expert who can help me find just the right plants for you. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I'm here a couple hours outside of Charleston at a major nursery. And I'm trying to find some plants that'll do really well at Judas. And to help me with that is the expert, Blaze. Blaze, how you doing? Roger, how you doing today? So tell me what you got here. Uh, this is all South Florida type product that we bring in. We do black pepper, we do coffee, pineapples. Now what climate is Judith's yard? She's zone hardy 8 to 10, so everything in here would do all right, either in a pot or in the ground. Boy, you got a lot of plants in here. Oh yeah, seven day a week job here, Roger. So one of the things that we talked about for Judith was this is a uh, Calamundan orange. Uh, you'll pretty much see this fruit almost year round on this tree, and as they get more ripe, the rind will get more orange, the fruit will get softer, and it will get sweeter tasting. Oh, so it's uh, edible? Oh yeah, it's great for her area. The only thing is that they recommend that in, when it's a younger tree, it may be a little more susceptible to some of that periodic you know, temperature dip there. Yeah. So as long as she just covers it with like a sheet or some kind of other plant protection, she'll be okay with it. Uh, great in a pot or even in the ground. What are all these white flowers over here? Uh, this is Meyer lemon. Meyer lemon. Yep. Something we ship all the way up into Boston and other parts of New England, all over the country. You'll get these flower once or twice a year, and then from there you're going to go ahead, it'll actually set the fruit, so that's the beginning of the lemon. And then eventually what you end up with is you get this. This is a Meyer lemon, Roger, and this is what you find in the grocery store right here. Wow, look at that. What a difference in size, oh, yeah. huh? Nice and sweet, nice and sour. This and, is sweet? Oh yeah, let me tell you, I got a glass of lemonade over there for oh, you yeah. too if you want to try. I'll give it a shot. No sugar, just Meyer lemon and water. That's good. Yep, yeah, that's good stuff. So, what else you got? Well, I got another greenhouse over here with a few other neat things to show you. This is Bougainvillea. You see a lot of beautiful specimens around the Charleston area. We've got needle palms here, which is a good foundation plant. Again, to give you that tropical feel. Uh, another one is, this is tropical hibiscus. Comes in red, pinks, yellows. Really nice plant, this is shrub form. And then the one Judith had mentioned, the uh, Japanese loquat. Or oh, that Japanese was plum. It, it turns into a pretty big tree. About 25 feet or so. There's a couple nice ones still in Charleston. Here's all the different bananas we grow here. Dwarf plantains, Cavendish, ice cream, Bajou, which is cold hardy all the way up to Massachusetts. I think it can take up to negative 10 degrees. You know, the big difference being whether they want just a straight green leaf or you want some kind of variation in color just for some different character. Something I think Jews will really like that's of interest is this is actually cold hardy tea. Um, they make tea out of the leaves. Uh, so not only do you get the, the uh, ability to make your own tea, but you get the beautiful white flower. And in Charleston, they still have a tea plantation producing this for the commercial markets. Thanks for all the great information. I think we should put a list together, get it to Judith and have her send us her final list and then get the plants on the job. All right, well, as soon as you get it to me, I'll get it out to you in 24 hours. 24 seven? You got it. You work a lot. In our modern plumbing world, we open up a faucet, we get fresh, clean water. We hit a button or a lever, and all of a sudden, the sewage or waste just disappears magically. But in much of Charleston's history, about 200 years, there was no indoor plumbing. If you wanted to relieve yourself, you had to leave the building and go to a separate building, an outhouse or a privy. It's actually much like a modern porta john and this would have been positioned somewhere on the back side of the property so you didn't have the smell near the house, and it wanted to be away from where the local water well was. But a lot of things got thrown into this eight-foot deep hole, and what happens around Charleston is every time this construction, it's a chance to uncover a time capsule and really look at sort of a, a glimpse of what life was once like. So Danny Riddle's our local expert at these parts. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. A little, little bit dirty bump. hand. Have to give you a fish bump. <laughs> so how did you get into this field? How did it happen? I'm going to tell you. When I was in elementary school, I grew up on James Island, close to Stiles Point Plantation. Okay. And back then, they would plant corn up front and turn the fields. Sure. So me and a couple of friends of mine would walk through the fields, and we'd find bullets, coins, buttons, et cetera, et cetera. So history came up out of the ground to you? Absolutely, and I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> you are so. Still have some of those items at the house today. So here we are. Is this the only uh, privy that this house ever had, do you think? I think 
th there were two houses on this property. The first one burned years ago. I think the original privy was in that right-hand corner. Okay, away a little bit. But I know that this privy is contemporary with this dwelling. Okay. I'm, a, I'm positive of that. All right, so take me through what it would have looked like here. A little roof Very or simple structure, wooden, of course. Slant roof, one very generic front door, and a bench with one hole. One hole. One hole. Okay. So, can you tell a little bit about how the people lived here? There's a lot you can tell about what you find in a privy. If you find marbles, we know they had children. Okay. If they were sick, they had medicine bottles. Okay. If they drank liquor, they drank liquor. Okay. And I want to, the reason I can tell you that is because I found about a dozen of these medicine bottles. They were right. all alike, paper right. label, so around 1910 or so. So, somebody in this house was ill. They're long gone. You got it. <laughs> Also, just to give you an idea, that particular bottle is a lot earlier. That okay. was a little bit lower down in the prison. That's now? around 1830 wine from probably wine France or Germany. All right, cool. Unfortunately, when I got a little lower, oh, yeah. I found that. So that's an indication that somebody has already jumped this privy. Oh, somebody beat so you I'm to all the good stuff? <laughs> somebody got all the good stuff. But I know for a fact that the floor in the kitchen house, under the floor when y'all pulled it up, has yeah. not been tampered with. Right. So I'm excited to go in the Let's kitchen and start that. digging that. Richard, this is some cool stuff that I found on some other house sites. Okay. Slop jaw or chamber pot cool. from Germany. A couple of bottles. But the coolest thing is this right here. The plate. So what is this? This is plate. a belt buckle or oh, breastplate? That could have been a breastplate or a belt buckle. Now which uh, army was this from? Yankee. The Yankees. Okay. The, from Union. The, okay. the Union. All those guys. All right, and who's helping us here? We got Trad here, the property owner's son. Hey, Trad, you got quite the tool, don't you? Yes, a metal detector. Great, super. You're a bit of a history buff? Yes, I'm interested in World War II, but there's no World War II things here, so I'm in the Revolutionary War and Civil War, this, and there's plenty of that stuff here. Boy, there sure is. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dig this dirt up, I'm going to put it on the sifter, and you're going to stand over here, and you're going to rot this as we go. Okay. okay. Let me hold that. Just pile it on. I'll show you how to do this. Just pile it. I can, do the shaky, I can do the shaky shake. Look at that, Richard. Okay, so that's a brass. That's part of a bell. Yeah. How about some china? Look at all. This is typical kitchen. Look at the bones. This is oh. what they ate and discarded. Yeah. That's the What's base it? of an oil lamp. An oil lamp. Yep. So how deep do you guys dig? Richard, on this site, we'll probably go down about 14 inches. Well, it is like a treasure hunt. I'm hooked. It, it yes. is a treasure hunt. Right. It's like Christmas. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I'll leave you guys to it. Well, they're going to keep on digging, and we'll be back next week when our mason, Mark McCullough, comes down to see just how they're going to repoint this beautiful brick. So until next time, I'm Rich Trithui for This Old House. Next time on This Old House. We'll show you how to fill the gap between the old casing and the newly exposed old brick. It takes some time, but it's worth it. We start to turn an antebellum dining room into a brand new kitchen. And then we'll do our stainless steel hood underneath, and we'll have a beautiful spot for our range. And I'm finding the hidden gardens of Charleston. Oh, wow, take a look at that. And our homeowner gets a lesson in wood flooring. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.